First of all, let, let's talk about the new addition, Zach Brunt. Tell us about him and why you brought him into the club. Yeah, um, a player that, that came to our attention in pre-season. I spoke with Sheffield United about him then, but kind of felt at that time that we were kind of a bit fully stacked and, and uh, at the start of the season with everybody in good shape that maybe might not um, get the minute straight away. But obviously now you see mid-season, the squad starts to thin, there's a lot of COVID issues. It makes sense to add some quality in there. Zach's a really good football player. Uh, he had a great loan at South End. I think that gave us a lot of reference points about how he'd fit at this level. Um, and then, yeah, it's just great to get another addition of, of quality into the squad to create some competition and um, and hopefully he can bring a, another creative element to the midfield. He's had such an interesting story in football, hasn't he? Going through the academy system and going over to Spain and I know that all fell through. So then go into non-league after that. It's To say he's only 20 years old, he's really been through the mill already as a footballer. You could say that or you could say he's had some really good experiences and he's probably stronger for them. So um, I think if you if you ask him, he, it's, he's learned something off of each of the experiences. He's now contracted at, at Sheffield United, who's a you know a top championship club and they they obviously think a lot of him so he's in a good place he's had one good loan i think he sees this as progression now um for his own career and and you know if he if he wants to to go back in the summer a better player hopefully we can help with that there are a lot to be said about a footballer at that age learning his trade through the non leagues rather than a player who comes through an academy system at a top club in the in the Premier League. What, what what are the different attributes that a footballer can learn in that way of doing things rather than coming through an under twenty three system? Um, I think you get more exposure to maybe the competition side and the um, and the, the the realities of of football of winning and losing. Um, sometimes in in twenty threes football, you can be shielded. A little bit from that and you're under a pillar of development so I think that being exposed to the, the first team environment I think players need to play sometimes you get 23s players get to 21-22 to and they've not had enough first team football so I think for him he's he's been out at, obviously he was 19 when he went to South End, and he's had first team exposure and, and now more here I think that's a healthy thing for a, for a young player the January window is now open for the Football League and, uh, of course, there's intense speculation about a, a number of Notts County players. Has that speculation materialised into any formal office for players coming in? Has it been a busy January so far? No. <laughs> Not really, <laughs> and long may that continue. Um, busy because we've, we've signed Anthony Patterson and uh, and Zach Brunt and we'll, we'll work away with one or two others. Um, but not for players going out. There's, we know that there's a lot of interest and that's because the team is playing well. There's a lot of young players and I think we play a, a style of football that probably teams higher up can relate to. So then there's obvious discussions around our players and that's normal in every window. It doesn't really bother us. We just crack on with what we're doing and... and uh, yeah, there's there's been nothing, no formal yet. Just uh, just talking hearsay. I guess it'd be worrying if there wasn't speculation about your players yeah. at this point in the season. Yeah, I think we. Ta I take it as a compliment when I, I look on the list and see so many scouts from good clubs sitting in the stands and and wanting to watch Notts County. Then I say there's something that we're doing right, and and that's only a good thing long term because more players will want to come here because they know they get developed to to maybe go to the higher echelons of the league and. Um, you know, we hope that this squad that we got can can take us there, and and they come on a journey with us. But it's it's normal to have speculation around a, a team of players that's playing well. Uh, Jane Richardson's coming clearly made a, a huge impact. Uh, Dover scheduled to be his last game at the weekend. Um, how impressed have you been with him and his time uh, at Meadow Lane? Is there a chance that he will stay beyond his loan spell? What's the latest with that? Yeah, really impressed with him. Uh, I think he's brought a lot to us, and he's. Um, not, not. I mean, you've seen the three games, but daily on uh, daily training, really good lad, works hard, um, well focused. I um, think he's enjoying himself here. So I think there's a we have a good dialogue with Forrest. That's going to continue through this week. I, I really hope that we can uh, do something to keep him here longer. But understandably, there's a lot of interest in a player like that. So, um, but we we've brought him in. I think he's had a good experience so far, and we'll see where it goes this week. Um, um, I'm hopeful we can do something, but you know it's um, like you say with a talented player like that. There's always a lot of competition for it. Are those discussions happening now, or will it be something that happens after the game at the weekend? 
No, the, we, do you know what we've had on, ongoing dialogue with Forrest since he arrived because they have an interest in him. I think they've been, they've had representatives at every game. Um, we've fed back after every game, you know, sent clips and and um, you know that's what we do. We we want to, if we take a player from a club, we have a responsibility to to try and help them be better. So uh, we've had a continuous dialogue with Forrest throughout the the loan spell, and that's been good. And are Gary Brazil and Andy Reid happy with his progress at the club over the last few weeks? Yeah, they were both uh, in the stands watching, um, and they were impressed. It was, they said it was the first time they'd seen him score a header, um, so that then that's definite progress. But they they're happy. They see him expressing himself on the pitch, and I think any young player that gets loaned out by a club, that's what they want to see. They want to come down and see them enjoying their football and, and improving. So Dover on Saturday then, a club in turmoil really, but I guess you could say their home games have been a little bit tighter than, than mm. their form on the road. Is, is it one of those games where only three points will do on Saturday? Well, I mean, that, that's the same for every game, to be quite honest. Um, I don't really, we, we, we don't plan ever to do anything other than win, so we always try to. And But we know that every game presents a, a new challenge and Dover will, will present a challenge regardless of where they are in the league. If we are 5% below where we should be, we can put ourselves in, in a problem. So we have to be absolutely on it. You know, there's, there's no way you can come foot off because you think it's a team at the bottom of the league. Um, the, the conditions will no doubt be tricky, uh, pitch and um, yeah. So the, the, these games are not uh, just a given. You have to work hard and, and any player that thinks it's a given may may uh, may find a, a rude awakening when they mm. get there. So we have to be um, on the ball. We can't take our, our eyes off it. And um, yeah, it'll be, uh, we, we want to continue with this good run. I guess the situation at a club like Dover and, and as we saw with Kings Lynn a few weeks ago, didn't have a, you know, a permanent groundsman in place. It really does uh, emphasise and hammer home the, the kind of golf in this division amongst the more established clubs like yourselves and those teams in and around you and those teams at the bottom of the league that the National League is really a, a, a table of two halves a league of two halves mm -hmm. Yeah I think we can consider ourselves fortunate that we're in a, a club that's got a lot of good things provided for it um, and, and we have great environment to work in and some clubs every club has their own challenge every manager has their own challenge and they certainly have some in, in these other clubs and, and they're, they're different challenges but they you know smaller budgets and they like you talk about the groundsmen and things like that but um, they're, they're no doubt working tirelessly to try to stop us from doing the things that we want to do um, and we, we have to respect that so uh, yeah we go there absolutely focused on, on the game and, and not underestimating it one bit. Appreciate your time Ian, thank you. Thank you. Recording stopped. Ian, just on um, on transfers, um, are you? I mean, obviously, the, the owners put a statement out saying that, that that any deal out of the club would have to be significantly beneficial to them. Yeah. Are, are you are you are you categorically ruling out departures before the end of January? Do you think that'll be taken out of your hands if the, if the offer is good enough? I I don't think you can ever categorically rule out anything because if a club comes with a a, a huge bid um, or, or something that you know can um, that is difficult to turn down that, then of course that that's but I think every single club is in that position whether you're a championship club or Premier League like everybody's a, everybody's got a price and is is potential to sell whether or not I really think that any club is coming in with a realistic bid I don't think so um, we'll, that, that we'll see but I don't think so um, not in this window, but of course, if if something that was huge came in, then we're going to sit down and discuss it. But we we have to have a uh, a plan for that. And and should we lose anybody, then we need somebody to come in and um, continue the the work that we're doing because you know we don't want to leave ourselves short going into the end of the season. So we'll have contingency plans for every situation. But I don't really anticipate um, a big bid enough uh, a big that's a tough one to say isn't it a bid big enough uh, to tempt anyone away um, I, I just wanted to specifically ask you about Callum Roberts and where does he fit in in the overall picture and has any club spoken to you about potentially trying to get him out of uh, get him out of knots no we've not had uh, of course I mean ever since I've been here there's, there's interest in Cal because he's a good football player um, but there's been no no contact formally about anything uh, to do with Cal. 
He has played really well this season, I think, in the, the moments that he's got. Obviously, he missed the last game because he was out all week uh, ill. But uh, he can play a variety of positions in the system that we play. He can play as a 10, as an 8. He can play wide. Um, and he's provided assists and goals already this season. So, uh, fully fit, firing Cal Roberts is really important to us. Um, but again, he will be a player, no doubt, that has some interest around him because he's a talented young football player. Um, I, I mean, ideally, you've obviously brought Zach Brunt in. Um, you've got Ruben Rodriguez to come back from suspension. Um, do you anticipate making any more signings? I mean, particularly if if, if Jaden, for instance, has to go back to, for instance, has to go back to Forest. Sure. I mean, of course, like uh, Dion is out at, at the moment, and uh, if Jaden was was to to not stay, then of course that might be an area that that we look to to strengthen there. But at the moment, I, th I think Jaden's doing well, and, and I'd really like to. To try to to extend that, but we'll we'll have to see. You know, we're in that dialogue with Forrest. So, um, uh, other than that, no, not the the. If something came up that we thought would would help strengthen us, not just short, but maybe long term, uh, on a permanent deal, that might be something that we look at. But we've got plenty of options. Believe me, we've got quite a wide uh, uh, recruitment base, and and we're kind of ready for different eventualities. So I'm fairly relaxed about it. How pleased were you to get Zach Brunt? Over the line was that because I mean I watched him for for Southend play against Grimsby earlier mm. on this and you can see what a, such a technically gifted player he is. Oh, very, very, very talented boy. Um, yeah, we, I've, I've known about Zach for a while, and, and obviously when the when I, I read that he was going back and they were considering what to do, so we we spoke with Sheffield United and he had a really good spell and and I think he really enjoyed himself at Southend. He spoke very highly of them, um, but I think. Probably having played against us in a game that we played really well, he can maybe see that he suits this style of play, you know, to to help him develop. So I think that was, I felt like that was maybe the the key selling point uh, for us. And then I was happy that, you know, there was league clubs interested as well, but he saw us as you know being able to help develop him. So now we have some really good options in there. We have different options depending on the game. We have. Um, a lot of strength in depth and, and you've just seen we played a game and we had three outfield subs um, I don't think that's the last time that we're going to be cut thin because of Covid issues or injury issues so going into this busy and, and last part second part of the season I think it's really important that we're equipped with everything that we need Are, are you um, in terms of the Covid situation how is that panning out for you at the moment Did, will you have players back for Dover and are, have there been any more positive cases no, but we, we've we've someone had to isolate because they came into contact. So we're trying to follow all the the protocols on point. Uh, one or two players that were out are returning to to train now, so we, we're in good shape for Dover. Um, not worried about that at all. Uh, we've obviously got Dover and then Kings Lynn. By Kings Lynn, we'll have uh, more players back, um, and then obviously we've got the trophy game the the following week, which just gives us a bit of breathing space. Um, so yeah, all being well, hopefully we're. We're in a good place. Uh, what, just can you just run us through the injury situation? So Dion's out at the moment. What's the what's the problem with him and, and just, likes of Jim O'Brien, etc. Yeah, D Dion's just uh, just been ill, um, been unwell, and, and he's uh, just recovering from that. Uh, Jim O'Brien is is still out. Uh, was was training a bit today. Um, so yeah, one, one or two returning. Uh, Joel Taylor's been back in now. Uh, Connor. Part, Connell is out at the moment, uh, should be back next week. Connor Parsons also. Um, so, yeah, slightly bigger group than we had last week, but still not full. <laughs> yeah, still not full. Um, I just wanted to ask you about your 2021 um, and looking back at the year and, and what you learned since you've come into Notts County and, and moving forward into 2022. What are your hopes and ambitions and um, any New Year's resolutions that you, that you may have? Well, I was out running this morning, early doors, Lee, so I'm still on that New Year's resolution, but I imagine that will um, fall apart fairly soon. Um, no, I don't have any big resolutions, just keep working hard. Um, and, and yeah, I, I enjoyed 2021 uh, from a work perspective. Obviously, I got an opportunity back in England, which I, I was really pleased with and, and learned a lot so far in the football club, uh, learning every day. Uh, just enjoy being here, really. Um, and, yeah, just hope to continue the progress uh, I think we've made good progress uh, the past how many months have I been in now nine ten almost 
Um, mm. I think we've made good progress. So just to continue working really hard to, to get better every day, that's it for me. What, what was the one single biggest thing that you, you learned? Um, I don't know really, Lee. That's a, that's a really good question. Um, yeah. Let's defend set pieces better. <laughs> That's it. Uh, no, listen. It's a tough league. It's a demanding league. I don't think you can take you. You can't take your eye off at any point. So it's just to be, you know, really, really on it every day. That's it. Um, no, no, no. Haven't learned anything hugely new. Just uh, small bits every day. Obviously, Dover. Um, what do you know about them, and what sort of threat do you think they will pose? I mean, because a lot of people have just written them off now because they're. They're obviously the problems they face, and the fact that they're destined to get to go down. Yeah. Um, did, I, I, how much is what is that like preparing for as a manager, knowing that you've got a, you're facing a team which has pretty much resigned itself to its own fate? I mean, I I, I don't know if they have. I mean, they, they, they've got a set of players there that will, will certainly have a level of professional pride, and and they will want to show that they are still good football players. Like I've never really seen a team, even when they're down and out. Um, totally give up every when those players get out on the pitch, and and if you give them a sniff that there's an opportunity, they'll try and take it. And especially against a club like us, they'll have their eyes on on the big games like us coming down there and and seeing if they can go and show that they're as good as we are. And 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 that's why I say if we come off it, give them an opportunity. They will they they will have players there that want to show that maybe they can uh, play at this level as well, that the level that we've performed at. So. Um, Sometimes a team that feels like it's lost everything is has then basically got nothing to lose. So they can be unpredictable games and difficult. So um, you have to approach it exactly like uh, every other game.